Welcome to Cooking with Indy. Today, we're making one of my favorites, brisket. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. So, as you can see, we've got a beautiful brisket here. It's uh, It's been washed. What I do is I take it out wrapping. I wash it into cold water, just uh, rinse it off, make sure that I feel it and notice anything funky or anything. And then, just a paper towel. I pat it to dry, as you can see. What I want to do, and then we got a lot of fat on this side. This is a side that's going to go on top. Um, at this point, once you pat it dry, if you wanted to, you could trim some of this fat down. You don't want to trim all of it. You could trim a little bit of, of it because um, brisket, when you're cooking it low and slow, this fat is what's going to keep it from uh, drying out. And it gives a great flavor. So there you have it it's ready to be messed with for the dry rub i'm going to use a combination of spices that i like and mainly that i have in my cupboard but you can pretty much do whatever you want you can add remove um, find that secret recipe and, and and use that there's no perfect way it's on your tastes so just keep that in mind i don't have actual measurements because each brisket size is different Every time that I'm doing dry rub is different, so I kind of make it from scratch every time. Um, I'm gonna start with a little bit of salt. You want salt? Use some pepper. We have comino, cumin. Now I don't have enough cumin in here. I'd like to use a little bit more than what I have here, but this is all I have, folks, so this will have to do today. Like I said, there's no such thing as a set recipe. A little bit of garlic powder, some gar um, onion powder. This gives a nice flavor. The red pepper flakes gives a nice little spice um, it's not going to kick your butt, but it will flare it up. So, this is actually, for what I've got in, in there, this is going to be about half of the rub, I think, because that's a big slab of meat. That was, uh, 11 pounds. How many? Nine, 11. 11.7 11. pounds, something like that. All right, chili powder is going to give it a little nice southwestern flavor. Um, when you think of fajitas or those kinds of flavors, the Mexican part of that flavoring is the chili powder and the comino, the cumin. And finally, I like to have some Mexican oregano. This is going to come whole. So you want to get some of it. Make sure that things like the little stems, you just pull those out. You can see them. You're not going to miss something big like that. And then between your palms. And there we go. Like that. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that. But uh, what you want to do is set this together so that you uh, on a bowl so that you don't have to kind of be guessing once you've started the process. And all I'm gonna do is mix that up. It's a dry rub, and I'm actually probably gonna need twice this much. But you've seen how I did it. It's not a hard thing. You know the combination of flavors you like. You can improvise on this. If you don't, that's why this recipe's here. There's a bunch of other recipes that uh, are gonna be on the interwebs. Uh, that way you don't have to improvise if it's not your big thing. But this is what's gonna go on the, on the meat itself. So what we're gonna do is three steps on this meat. I'm going to put some fresh squeezed lime juice over it, rub that in, 
and then I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil with uh, some liquid smoke and then we're going to do the dry rub on top of that so those are the three layers we're going to do on this before we put it in the oven um, I have the way I like to mix I don't like to use too much of this because it'll overpower easily taste or, or smell chemically so I don't like to add too much but I do love to use it every now and then so I'm going to use um, three of these teaspoons to a cup just like that and you want to mix that really well it won't want to mix right off the bat but don't let that stop you and once you've done that then that is ready to put on the pork with one of these but I'm sorry to put on the brisket with one of these bad boys the next thing the very first thing we're gonna do though is we are gonna squeeze some fresh lime juice on here so I like to do one handed clean keep one clean hand and then with the other I can do everything uh, I can rub it in. As we were talking about that Southwest flavor, that's what this lime is for. This lime is going to help give it some of that flavoring. So I'm looks like I'm going to use one and a half limes. These are pretty uh Juicy. Oh, this is going to be yummy. There you have it. Once we have that, then we can start adding our oil. So to get a good coating of this oil, juice one of these bad boys. And then with your hand that's been compromised, you can rub that in. So the liquid smoke is not 100% necessary. It just gives it that smoky flavor, the, the, the aroma as well. Um, if you don't want to add it onto the olive oil, you can also put it in water uh, on the, in the pan so that it evaporates as well uh, while this is cooking. If you do it that way, then you might want to add a little bit more, probably double of what I added to this um, in that water. But just like this, this is going to be a beautiful little touch of that southwestern smoke. So the reason that I want to do the olive oil like this is that just like the fat that keeps this, uh, this meat from drying out, the lot, when you give it a nice little covering, it's going to seal it nicely and it'll keep it from drying out. But also it'll help with our dry rub to stick in there better and permeate and give it full flavoring, which is exactly what we want. Using the same technique of having the one hand that's going to be touching the meat and the other hand that's going to be clean. Um, you start to put that rub on here. Lay it down and then you pat that bad boy in. Just like that. After a while, you'll be flying through this. Now I like to do the fat side first because that's what's going to go on top. So when I turn it over, I coat the other side um, 
it might get a little disturbed, but when I set it down in the pan, I'll set it down with that, I'll set it down correctly, and so this top will come back to me, and I can touch it up if I need to, right before it goes into the oven. So that's the reason I like to do it that way. This side, once it goes, once it gets this treatment, it's gonna go down on the bottom part of the pan, this is face down, and so it will not be disturbed. Once it's set, it's set. What about the edges? Uh, yes, I will do the edges. Okay. Yeah, the whole, the entire um, piece of meat should be given this treatment, including the sides and the edges. So let me see, let me show you how I do that. This little guy is just hanging out. I'm going to eat him in just a minute. <laughs> We've got the dry rub in. This is the side without the big layer of fat. So that's going to go face down. And this is where I break my rule. But I need both hands for this. So I am just going to gently and lovingly put this bad boy in here. And as you can see, not a lot of this fell off. But anything that I wanna put on, I can, but it, this is beautiful. It did not lose much of anything. So now, now that we have it like this, um, it's time to get it in the oven. In order to get it in the oven, I'm, uh, I want to prep it, so I'm going to cover it with some foil, but I'm also going to add a little water underneath the rack um, with that foil, so it traps it in there, and it keeps it, it keeps uh, it keeps it moist. It keeps it from drying out. That's what we're trying to do throughout this whole thing because we're cooking it in there for 12 hours, and you do not want to dry it out. Um, so let me get that done. Last steps I'm going to take uh, before I put this in the oven, I'm going to add a little bit of water as moisture to the bottom of the pan. Uh, I don't want it to be up too high where it's touching the meat. And once I cover it, whatever juices come out of the meat is also going to go in there and it's going to keep uh, that slow cooking, thorough cooking, infusing. Um, you just don't want it to get too dry in there. I would say once it goes in, check it. In 12 hours, check it, maybe two, maybe three times, just to see um, that it's not dried out on you. But I just add a little bit of water, and all right, and I'm going to cover this bad boy up just like this. set at 250 and I'm gonna move no that'll be perfect right in the center of the oven right there and you go ahead and set your timer the reason you want to open and close the door and the oven is that it'll lose heat and it goes up and down and blah 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 as it is as it is, most uh, ovens aren't even that accurate. They're like plus 25, my, plus minus 25 degrees sometimes. So that's why you don't want to do that. So you can at least keep it consistent. Uh, but you do want to check it. You don't want to dry it. So we'll check in on it in a few hours.
You might be wondering, when is he going to add the sauce? Well, not all brisket get sauce, but if you want to add sauce, just like with ribs, at about 10 hours, you check it, that, and it's at, at 250 for two more hours. So at about 10, 11 hours, um, depending on how you want that to cook through, that's where you add your sauce. Once it comes out, the brisket is ready to serve on the spot. You put it on your cutting board and you want to cut a little bit at an angle, thin slices. It's going to be super tender with an incredible crust, which is what we're looking for. So we are done. Let's pull it out and see what this bad boy looks like. So you guys saw what I pulled out, make sure it wasn't being over overwhelmed by juice, by its own fats, because that's what drizzles down. And this is this is what we've got at the very end of it all. Let's go ahead and take this off of here. And we'll start slicing and serving. Mm-hmm. Mm. see what this bad boy looks like. Look at that. It's tender. This is perfect. So there are two ways that I like to do this. I don't have a smoker yet. That's why I'm not smoking this. But this comes out incredible. If you like to have a thick crust around it, you gotta use a cast iron. The cast iron will give it a nice little crust. What we have here is ready for tacos. Um, and there's just two different ways to make it. If you have any questions on how to make this, just um, holler at me. I'll be more than happy to answer. And I'd be more than happy to walk you walk you through any problems you might have. This is one of our favorite foods today, the brisket, and we usually only can afford this when we're celebrating something awesome. And we're celebrating a great year. So I want to wish you all a very happy 2019. And please share with us your stories, your cooking stories especially, on, uh, on, on Cooking with Indy. Thanks again for watching Cooking with Indy. I hope you enjoyed this episode. This is an easy, easy recipe. It's a little expensive. I'm sorry on that cost thing, but uh, sometimes you want to treat yourself. And if you would do me a favor, please hit subscribe. We need the followers. We need the numbers. That way more and more people get to enjoy these recipes. Con provecho. Deep back room!